Alright guys, so today I'm going to show you, <clears throat> excuse me, the Blue Sky Bio, the 4.10 update, they were nice enough to give us early access to, which I was pretty excited about, obviously. Um, I've discovered it's super user-friendly, can't get confused very much, it will walk you straight through it. Um, I'll go through some of the features with you guys. Um, remember, I'm not a doctor, I'm an assistant, um, but I love my job, I do these a lot, uh, and I was excited to try this new software that they've been opening. So you can either do that anterior D programmer or just an occlusal bite split, which we're going to do. We are going to add a patient's name. We'll just make up a name. Don't need an email, but it does need a country. And I'm in the United States, and we're going to create that. So we've created her name, and then we're going to create this. But I always like to name it with their name. Upper Splint. And that automatically puts the date in for you, which is nice. So, next thing. Splint minimal thickness. When I opened this up, it said 3 millimeters. I changed it to 1 millimeter, 1.03 last time, and it saved those settings, which is really nice to see. Um, split offset, 0.10 millimeters, which is what I always do. Follow cusp tips to radius of 7 millimeters. We will be able to adjust that later, but let's go ahead and select the upper jaw that we'll be doing. I like all of that. That was what I did last time. We're going to import the models. This is kind of nice because it tells you what's required, and then you can upload optional data. Um, for a bite split, we obviously don't need a lot. So let's just go import those files. And shift. Of course, my computer is being all difficult today. Open both of those. Uh, I'm going to try to put out some more training videos um, with all the new stuff as time goes by. I will be in Chicago next week for the Midwinter Convention. Um, hopefully meeting a lot of people there and learning some good stuff. So we've got the upper and the lower. You can view them both at the same time. You can import extra stuff. But this is just a basic split. So we only need upper and lower. And as we know with Prime Scan, it will automatically... Um, embed the mesh in the bite so you don't have to upload a different bite. Just like always, we're going to do that three point articulation. So shift click, shift click, and shift click. So we've got our model all aligned, and we're going to tell it where we want it to place the articulator right at the midline, just like it shows over here. Super user friendly. So I told it to open it two and a half millimeters, but I can see now it may be open two and a half in the front, but it's not open two and a half in the back. So we're going to do open it in about 3.8 millimeters. And remember, we've already set that minimal thickness at one. So now that we've done that, there is the advanced setting down here, but you shouldn't need to do that. Um, we do have the model editing mode, which you can do if you need to adjust something on here. You can take some screenshots, which is nice. Put any notes in there about it if you need to communicate anything with the doctor or anything special about it. And then there's also the job movements, but we don't need to worry about that right now. Next, we're going to remove those undercuts um, by defining how it's going to be inserted. I like my undercuts right across the gingival line because I'm going to be putting my split right about here. And I want to engage some of those undercuts to keep it in, but not engage too many to where the patient can't get it out. That is a pretty, pretty happy with that one right there. Split curve. So let's draw that curve. Um, you could do them all the way across, only like a third of it. You could do this scalloped, could do them straight across. I really do not think there is a wrong way to do it. And we are going to go ahead and draw that curve, shift and click, or you can shift and draw, but I have kind of, I don't have the best. I'm still a little shaky, and I'm not feeling so good because I'm at home sick today. So we're just going to do these dot to dot all the way across. You'll notice I put below that little guy because we don't want to confuse the computer or engage too many undercuts right there. We want to engage more undercuts in the posterior. 
than in the anterior. If we engage just in the posterior and not too much in the anterior, it'll still make it so it is um, a nice guard, but also make it easy enough for the patient to remove. I'm going about halfway up, but if you mess it up, that's okay. You can come back and you can adjust these. I don't suggest, like, don't go back right now and try to adjust them because it'll confuse the computer. See, it did that one. So then we'll just keep going, and then I'll show you how to adjust them when you're done. If you try to adjust them while you're drawing it, it'll get really confused. See, and, like, even those didn't. There we go. And I didn't get all that data right there, but that's okay. Um, see, that one needs to be brought up. I'll bring that one up just a tad. Okay. And we'll bring these up just a little just to make sure they don't interfere with that area. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're going to set the raised area. So this part kind of confused me at first, but now I get it. So are we going to raise jaw profile to antagonist cusp tips? Or are we going to raise jaw profile to visualize plane? So are we just going to tell it visually come down to a certain amount? Or are we going to tell it to raise these cusp tips to come down to hit the antagonist? So do we want more of a flat plane or do we want something that is... Um, a little more natural and a little more like a like a triple layered thermoform kind of thing. Um, I don't think there's any wrong answer with either of them. Let's just go with antagonist cusp tips for now. All those settings that we did earlier are still on there. And then it'll compute that view. I should note my computer at home is really slow right now. Um, I don't have great internet. But uh, it should be a lot faster at home, and you should be able to get through this part pretty quickly. So, as we can see, we raise those cusp tips, and you can see it's kind of like scallop looking right there. So, that's giving us the preview of the splint. Or, we can go this way. Or, we can say, if you aren't caring about the bite very much, and you just want a little guard... You can go up, and they will, and it won't raise those at all. It'll just be splinted around it, but I know I don't want that. Let's go into the view, though, and turn on that lower jaw. I don't want those teeth sinking that far into it. So, yeah, it looks like it's about 1.5 millimeters. Let's give that a try. Um... You know, when I first did this, the first time it took me probably about 15 minutes, I would only imagine that it's going to go a lot faster. And they're continually removing all the bugs and fixing things and um, listening to our input. So that's kind of nice. So I have decided I like that one. That one looks good to me. Um, we can get it now. Maybe a little, a little. So we're going to reset it. And we can change it if we want. That's the wonderful thing about digital dentistry. If we don't like it, we can change it. It's easily on the computer. Uh, it makes it easier to try new things and new techniques. Um, but let's see. We can play with all these buttons. Do we want to see the model? Do we only want to see the splint? Do we want to see the upper jaw, not the lower jaw, or vice versa? You know, whatever you're doing, there's always there's room for it. So, I tend to like this kind right here where they just raise the cusp tips. But that's just me. I really don't think there's a right or wrong answer to it. Um, but then I will show you how to um, make sure the bite is just perfect, too. Called, um, you know, removing the collisions. We all have our own names for it, but... Okay, 
So now we're going to go to edit split model. This is going to take it just a minute. It's basically building it right now. Got to give the computer a second. You'll notice when it comes up in the next section that it doesn't look like a perfectly glassy smooth, but remember, we're looking at about 10 times as big it is. It's going to be a lot smaller. And you're also going to be either hopefully polishing or kind of candy coating these with um, an extra layer of some smooth um, resin on top of it and then curing it. So whatever it is, so I don't worry too much about if it looks just a little bit rough or not because I know that I'm going to polish the whole thing. Um, so I'm not too terribly worried about that. And the nice thing is these things will print pretty fast. If you have the, um, Sprint Ray Pro S, you can use the bolt speed. And then if you have the Pro Cure 2, um, it even cures it a lot faster. We have the Pro Cure 1. So it does take, I want to say like 44 minutes to cure. Um, hopefully it'd be upgrading soon. And we've got our splint. Let's go ahead and I'll go through all these tools with you real fast, but we are just about done. So there's your tool of smoothing and remove material. So that'll be shift or control, depending on which one you're doing. Um, the local deform, so if you want to move some material around. Um, and then we have automatic collisions removal tool, which is what we need to be looking at. So we have the collisions on, and then let's go ahead and turn off that bottom jaw, and then we can see it's really heavy in just a few areas. So we'll click remove collisions. Excuse my runny nose. And then you can see it, it's nicer now. Less red areas. We are hitting a little bit heavy in the back, but that's obviously to be expected. But more orange and blue all over, which I like. Um, so you'll probably learn the program better. You'll know that with this sort of bite, you want to raise the cusp tips. Whereas um, with another patient of yours who has another issue, you might want to just extrude it down until it hits the antagonist. You'll get to know the program better. You'll get to know what works and what doesn't work. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and hopefully I'll be putting out more videos soon. Uh, then all we have to do, last thing, is go to export. It's going to contact a license server like it always does. Only cost half an export, which is nice. You can export the upper and the lower jaw if you, you know, did some manipulation to them, but I didn't do any manipulation, so there's no need to export that. Do it as an STL or an object and export that easy. Um, I think this is a great program for assistance. There are some limitations to it, but I'm sure that they will just continually uh, improve it. We do use Blue Sky Bio for a lot of other things, so we were excited to see it. Stay tuned!